Thank you for tuning in to Copland Comic. I'm Brian Copland. We're here with Comic Ski Mask host. Ski Mask host, how the hell are you? Ski Mask Collective finally in the fucking house. Yes, I know. I've been looking forward to this for a month or so. <laughs> yeah, and, dude, uh, the man behind the mask, dude. I can't believe I'm talking to you. I can't believe you're, you know, you're fucking in the flesh, man. Like, right. Like I'm, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> like, like good, yeah, good thing we're not visual here. Like, you know, you would have to have the ski mask on the whole time. I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, I would. I would have to don it uh, right in the middle of summer, <laughs> which I'm gonna have to be doing anyways pretty soon. Yeah, so, once the quarantine opens, man, you're gonna have to go all these rooftop shows and park shows with a ski mask on, and it's, dude, I almost think it could be dangerous, man, with the cops around here, man. Who the fuck is this guy in a ski mask? Maybe he's a colored person. Well, the first thing I did was when it when it started getting big, I I headed to one of the protests and did some interviews, but I printed out a fake press pass and made it look really legit, so I could just pull it out nice. and like, listen, you know, it's part of a media corporation. <laughs> yeah and did i don't know work? if it's did believable you get some, good, some good sound bites uh yes i did i actually uh that was a whole story that unfolded uh as part of the show but. nice but dude you got the biggest fucking comics and it sounds like it's you and ant mead and jim stancil and you guys are um you know former super fans and you're 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 a comedian and so you guys got together and you just have the biggest names on there man like looking at the guests on your show it's the who's who of club comics and these are big names Right. It's it's a little wild um, how it all <laughs> unfolded, really. Uh, you know, I had some of the big names on and what, what was good as a one on one interview. I kind of wanted a more uh, grasping, exciting show. And I knew that bringing on two super fans that are also massive personalities. I mean, yeah. those, those, those two were just hard to contain would just I mean, <laughs> set the show uh, in, in a spiral motion. So it, did Jim Stansel go against Bob Biggerstaff in the, uh, the eating challenge? They did. They did. And, and Bob won, right? Bob won, surprisingly. Uh, you know, we put out a poll, and it was about 95% of the people said that Jim would win. And uh, the thing about it, Jim came into that uh, huge opening. He walked in like the biggest wrestler in the world, was talking <laughs> trash for two weeks, and Bob just stayed quiet. Even during the whole episode, he didn't uh, He didn't say a word and it just finished. You know, I think he had seven nuggets and maybe a few french fries left at the end. Yeah, so I mean, was it a speed it was a speed challenge or was it an amount challenge? That's the funny part. We we didn't know how it was going to go down until <laughs> five minutes before. All we had was uh, it was one Big Mac, two double cheeseburgers, uh, two McChickens, two large fries, and an apple pie. That's and, getting up uh, there. I was about to challenge the winner, but that sounds like a lot. Yeah, it is. So, you know, I know Silk City Hot Sauce wants to make this an annual thing, but I, I don't know who's going to want to go up against those two after seeing that. I mean, that's a that's a lot of food. Yeah. How fast did he do it? Uh, we we ended up deciding on a 30 minute time limit right before. Okay. So we had, once the 30 minutes was up, he had seven nuggets and just a few fries left. And Jim had, uh, you know, maybe double that left. OK. Well, yeah, I'm so tempted. Were they allowed to dunk the, the buns or no? I thought they they were they should it. Yeah. They both showed up with no sauce. I said, "How are they going to eat all this with no sauce?" <laughs> yeah, that's why you have to fucking uh, get it sponsored by a sauce. That's awesome. It, 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 the whole <laughs> thing was sponsored by a hot sauce company. <laughs> oh my gosh! And they didn't put any fucking hot sauce on there. No, no. I think uh, exactly. it, they said it was going to so, slow them down, but I don't. I don't okay. see how that's the case. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Oh, well, I'm so tempted because you look at some of these people on there, like M Molly Schuyler or Schuler or some of these Maddie Stone. They're just fucking animals, man. Right. The, the amount they fucking eat. But yeah, yeah. back to the, you know, the, the normal normal programming is you and the, the big comics. And, and what are you guys typically talking about? Are you are you using their own shows as kind of a jump off to your show? Like, all right, you guys talked about this last week. You know, let's get your unvarnished take on it after the fact. Well, see, the, the whole show started as uh, as me kind of giving a wrap up to Misery Loves Company, which is Kevin Brennan's podcast, um, because, you know, he's involved in some drama sometimes and there's some comics that don't like him. And, and in general, there's just he's got this weird fan base that I've been a part of. And so is Jim and Ant. And uh, so now it's kind of devolved into more. So we brought on other comics that that sometimes haven't even been on that show or heard of it. And we kind of just devolve into what they have going on. Like, so if they, you know, I'll, I'll ask them questions such as, what do you not like about the comedy scene? And if they even, you know, they say something and it'll just start a whole, a whole trifecta of, uh, you know, basically what different comedians like and dislike and, 
and things like that. So it's uh, and it ends up just turning into fun and a lot of trash talk. <laughs> and I, so it's like Jerry Springer in that if somebody's got beef with Kevin Kevin Brennan, it's going to be Kevin Brennan coming out of the fucking coming out from from behind the drapes. And if somebody has has beef with Aaron Berg, it's like Aaron Berg's going to come out of the fucking fucking drapes and, and throw a haymaker. <laughs> Well, first of all, if anybody out there has beef with Aaron Berg, you might want to think <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, both with comedy and just him beating your ass. Literally. Yes, I yes, think, yes. I think you can do both, yeah. I, uh, I actually hung out with Aaron Berg in San Antonio one time, and when you see him in real life, you're like, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not going to mess with him. You know, this is, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to mess with him in any respect, man. Like, the dude right. is a, co- a comedy dude who can beat ass, and so I wouldn't fucking touch him. Yeah. I've, been trying to, yeah, I've been trying to get in, t- in touch with Kevin Brennan, but I think his, uh, either he, it's like the form, the form on his website doesn't even work. I think he's inundated with fans or something. Right, yeah, and he's, he's taking a little break from Twitter right now, I know. Uh, he's just had a lot going on. I think he's just ready to get back out there. You know, the quarantine's really got a lot of, a lot of people shut down, you know, internally. Yeah. So yeah, kinda... oh yeah, especially if they were big enough to do this professionally where this was their sole source of income. Mm-hmm. It's like they're a victim of their own success. You know, a lot of other people didn't get that far, so they kept their day job. And so some of these people still have income and you know aren't as just fucking crushed and, and raring to go and you know, because some of these people if they're so far along, I mean, those are the people you're now seeing on the rooftops and in the parks, man. These people are ready ready to get their sole source of income back. Right, right. And it's 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 kind of drawn on too long where at first it was kind of like, all right, you know, we'll make light of it. But no one's making light of it anymore. We're like, uh, let, can we please just go do 30 <laughs> minutes somewhere? Just drive just drive over here in this park. Yeah. And so like what are some what are some of the beefs that um, that are coming up? Like, what do they dislike about comedy clubs and, and what are a lot of the comics saying? You, 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 you know, Ski Mask host is the one to ask because you and the Ski Mask <laughs> Collective have your ears to the ground. Right, right. Well, um, you know, in general, w- with beefs between other comics, um, it it's weird how you can kind of devolve them on a podcast because you don't want to like play sides too much. But then again, you kind of do. Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> you want the drama. You like the drama ski mask. Host. We love the drama. You know, that I mean, <laughs> we were we were the podcast fans first. That's what attracted us to the shows. And then uh, so now it, the, the things that they don't like, for instance, um, when they do shut down and they're bringing in 50% capacity for say, um, they don't think there's any reason, you know, there should, the, the waiting staff should be, uh, working just as hard as much, you know? So like there could be different plays employees because there's however many clubs there are. Yeah. And it's the same way, uh, down here in, in my city, uh, just to, cause we all know what's going to happen when it does get filled back up. Uh, certain names are going to get booked. And yeah. uh, but because they simply sell tickets and that's the way it is. And then that's just going to cause an uproar to go right back down the same rabbit hole as was happening before the coronavirus, you know, uh, which was which was uh, basically you're either a club comic or you're you're selling arenas, you know, and, yeah. and, and it's hard to break that threshold. So I think right now uh, from hearing from a lot of these guys on the shows that. This this whole pandemic is is changing everything about the world. So if they were to open the clubs back up all at once, everybody pretty much agrees that they should go a different route. Um, yeah. You know, bring in some different acts. You know, maybe sometimes people don't want to hear what was going on beforehand, and it might set off a, a new revolution of comedy. And it, who knows? Like a lot of people are saying, it could not even happen in New York City. Ah, what other cities do you think it could happen in? Like, you know, I suppose uh, something that's a little bit less dense or cheaper. You know, cheaper yeah, less thinking. dense and cheaper. Because you know what attracted people to New York City was just the hustle and bustle. Well, yeah. after this, you know, everybody's <laughs> sitting around the house. They're not sure if they want to go back to hustle and bustling. Yeah. But no, a lot of the guys are moving down to Florida, and Florida's a, a hot spot right now for comedy. Um, and it, which makes sense because you know, if people are retiring, why not go out to a comedy club? Yeah. And uh, it just seems like when, when everything does come back to normal, are people really going to be searching to go out to a comedy club? Because people kind of did that beforehand to get away. Well, now they're just going to be wanting to get out, you know, yeah. and, and maybe just just relax and have a nice meal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so, so many different ways that it could be done. And the people with the ideas are the comics who've done it for so long. And I like the idea of kind of opening up you know, to, to other names. Cause it's like, you would think these same names get booked over and over and it gets old. Like even some, you know, on a podcast, you know, like 
you know, some of the hugest names, you know, like, yeah. you know, the big, big names. I'm not, you know, like even you know, like, like Bill Burr, like how many, you know, I love Bill Burr. He's on my Mount Rushmore, but it's like, how many podcasts can you see him on? He's on all of them. You know, right. and, and, and Burt Kreischer, like he's, he's funny too. And I like his podcast and, and how many podcasts can you see him on? Although I had former guest Elise, Elise Morales, and she's now, uh, she's now, pod- she's now interviewing people like, like Burt Kreischer. And so that would be, that'd be really exciting to do, but you know, the biggest names, how many different ways can you see the same comics is my kind of general thought. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's basically what it is. You know, um, it, I guess, I guess the biggest thing is uh, all these touring comics that work the same clubs, like say for instance, if you're working the cellar, you might not be working, uh, you know, a neighboring club. Okay. So if there was a way to, to just to kind of roundabout, like place people, you know, have them like certain nights of the week or things like that, or when they wanted to book. But like you say, not the same thing over and over because uh, how many more years are going to go on where Bert Kreischer's podcast or Bill Burr's podcast or all these big name podcasts are still the most popular? There's really no new names that are developing. Um, yeah. ev- everything's kind of turning over to what uh, YouTube acts and, and things like that yeah. are selling out clubs. It's yeah. it's no longer about the art of writing jokes and, and being funny. Now it's just if, OK, if you're a big personality on, on the Web, you can sell out a club. You don't even have to be funny, which is kind of really messing up the purpose of comedy. Yeah, like who the fuck is going to go out? Yeah, who the (laughs) fuck is going to go out to a club if that person is not funny? Yeah, I think I talked to a booker for a big place, and he said something like, um, you know, off pot. He said something like, "Oh, there's some podcasters who have such a following that they could sell out this big old comedy club in in seconds." I've heard that. I've heard. I I talked to a guy that uh, that works for a big club, and it's same thing. They, they, I mean. It's a business. They're going to book those acts because they're going to sell out the tickets. It doesn't mean that they want to or that they like that, but that's just the way the world works right now. Those YouTube acts can just sell out every seat. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, they must be missing. You know, you know, these comics just must be missing when the the person who's making all the money also gave a shit about standards. You know, because there's a way to make money and be like, no, that person is not funny enough. <laughs> right, like right. The, the gate, the gatekeepers not only care about the gate as in money, but they care about the keeper, the keeper yes. part of the gatekeeper word. You know, they want to keep the standards high and get the gate, even if the gate is slightly, you know, sells out slightly slower. <laughs> I mean, doesn't matter if the play sells out in six seconds or or six days; it's still right. months in advance, right? Yeah, and that honestly, that's what everybody has always respected. You know, true comics. When I say everybody have respected about the comedy seller. I mean, like, you have to be funny enough. You have to get past. Everybody that goes on that stage or sits at that table have earned their right to be there. It, they're not going to host a show with uh, somebody just because they have a following. You know, they're, yeah. they're real real comedians. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's what attracts people to a club like that. It's, it's, I wish that every city could have a, a club as such you know where it's yeah. just it's real comedy underground these guys are writing their own jokes it's not uh you know singing or whatever they're doing on these youtube videos <laughs> <laughs> and I, I guess part of the problem is you know the gate becomes more important than the keeper you know in the gatekeeper role because the rent in manhattan is just so fucking high yeah and so the, you know locating in greenwich village i mean i can't imagine rents rents any higher other than something like midtown but, um, you know, either the real estate market is going to come back down to earth because the pandemic, like who the fuck is going to pay these prices now? Or like you said, it's going to go to a different kind of um, location in the country. But, you know, something like Florida is, you know, even if it's a good possibility, that's fucking not out of the woods. It's very much in the woods with respect with respect to Corona. So, um, yeah, they'll have to pick a new location. But who knows if it's <laughs> going to be Florida? Like, yeah, Florida's got to survive first, you know. Right. I mean, see, I'm located in Texas, actually. And if I wanted to do a round of clubs, I mean, this is what makes New York so great because, you, you yeah. know, Aaron Berg special 25 sets with a 25 <laughs> in, in one night. If yeah. I wanted to go uh, from a club in Houston to San Antonio to Dallas, that's a that's a two day trip. That's four hours <laughs> in between each. You know, you got to you got to do a special three, three, three clubs in two days, man. Yeah, it's exactly. The opposite of Aaron Berg. You know? And it's so massive. Like, so even if you wanted to work these open mics. You basically would have to live right near the club. I mean, you can't get anywhere without a vehicle down here. Yeah. Up there, you know, there's so many clubs, even bars you could work uh, as a comic. And, and to see those places struggling right now 
is is hurting a lot of those, those comics up there. So, well, if there's a way for you know if 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 there's a way for it to be done, you know, Ski Mask Host and Ski Mask Collective is probably going to do it because it would take almost a union 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 unionizing effort to change the game. Yeah, it, it it's something one could dream of. You know, yeah. um, I love bringing the comics together on my show. And even if they disagree about something, I mean, it just makes for great because I was always a radio fan first. Um, <laughs> and that makes that I know what that makes for good radio. People are yeah, going to listen and tune in. Who wants people to agree? Yeah, who wants exactly. people to agree? Fuck that. Yeah. Right, right. But if, if like, I like can... even on the, yeah even on the parlor site, they're talking. You know, the right wing figures are pissed off that there's nobody to troll. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, it that's doesn't. All right wing figures. Yeah. That's what <laughs> happened. Yeah. Paying. Yeah, they're paying people to, you know, like if you have 50,000 followers and you're a left left winger and you come on Parler, they're going to pay you money to bring your 50,000 followers because they need somebody to troll over there. Uh, right, right. <laughs> it, it, that's another thing uh, I was thinking about throughout all of this is uh, as far as the censorship, you know, are, yeah. are, are, are comedy fans really going to want to put up with an over overload of, of censorship when all this is over? Like, I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think they're going to be wanting to hear any and all, you yeah. know. Yeah, let them de- let that let them decide. Yeah, who, right. the f- who the fuck trusts the censors right now? It's who the don't... censors. Yeah, if you are a censor, you are part of the system that just gave us a pandemic exactly. and pol- police brutality protests across the world. Like, we don't want to hear what the fuck you're censoring. I, like, we want yeah, we want to hear it. We don't want to hear it being censored by the system. You know. I mean, that's what made media so beautiful when it first you know got big uh, in the late 1900s is is you never knew what you were going to see the next day. And so <laughs> if, if they censor stuff too much, it, it's going to get boring because every, it's basically going to be the same act. You know, yeah. it, it, how far can you go with a personality without uh, being open to doing whatever you want? <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, I would think that, you know, Ski Mask Collective, you know, if you're dishing the dirt on all these great comedians like is there any way that you can also supplement it with like some sort of print offering like i guess not print i guess it would be digital but you know let me check the twitter account because you might be dishing dirt on here or you might just be promoting episodes what are you doing with your social handles are you just uh, posting episode clips uh no on the twitter uh i I respond to a lot uh you know most of the tweets uh and i know i don't need to do that so maybe I should, you know, tone it down a bit. But no, I'll talk a little trash on Twitter and have fun with it. You know, yeah. uh, th- like th- last night there was a guy trashing the show a little bit, and I, I know he's being a troll because there was a- another comic that does a show that was, uh, quote unquote, going to send people after me. And I know <laughs> it was one of his uh, followers, so I just kind of clowned him. And that's what makes it fun. I mean, it gets yeah. a it gets a lot of likes because, like you said earlier, people. People like to watch something when two aren't agreeing. <laughs> I love that. And so to pit yourself against other pods, man, that's fucking amazing. Right. And I'm trying to I'm trying to break through on the Instagram because there have been a few acts and uh, a few people I've, I've tried to get on the show. Not even comedians, per se, uh, even other industries that, that are suffering right now to, to get somebody on. And sometimes they only use uh, different platforms. So uh, without a big following on a platform... Sometimes it's hard to hard to get a gathering. <laughs> uh, like they may take I one mean, look at it and be like, ah, you know, he's, he's nobody. But because who's going to go look at podcast listens, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose money talks, man. If you pay somebody enough money, but you know, if the pie, like, I, you, you, I really think I could go after big names and get big names. But first of all, they tend to cancel. Like, you yeah. know, when I pay more money, I get more time. But that's like if that person cancels because they got a last minute gig and it happens. Like that could have been two or three comedians who were just as fucking funny. Like just because you're a bigger name doesn't mean like and also if they don't promote, like if they're in 15 podcasts and they don't promote, it's like, well, why the fuck did I pay you all this fucking money if (laughs) you're not putting your name behind it? And so, like, you know, just chasing big names and things like that, you can pay for it. But if it's not then leading to your own bottom line, like it's not going to last very long. Like you can't keep being paying for the big name. So it's. It's uh, like you're just fucking batting a thousand with your guests. You know, I see some of, you know, I had uh, Kevin Dombrowski on and I had yeah. uh, Stacey Pressman and I had, of course, Chrissy Mayer is fucking hilarious. Like yes. these these people are just so fucking hilarious to be able to, you know, spend t- you know 15 minutes with. It's just a fucking pleasure. And the fact that, you you know, those are your episodes out of the gate. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know, you I fucking mean, 40 episodes with some of the some of the biggest names in New York City comedy. And it's fucking it's impressive. And, you know, if you're doing it without, you know, fucking killing your budget that's fucking amazing dude <laughs> yeah um I, t- to be completely honest i haven't spent a dime i mean <laughs> nice. I, it, it, it's fun because 
I, I don't mean to gloat here, but I'm doing something different with this show. Um, yeah. I'm going after what people want to hear. And the only reason I know that is because I was a fan first of, uh, yeah. of, of everybody's show. And I know what people are saying on Twitter. So, <laughs> I mean, so I was like, all right, I'm going to provide a show for that. And so yeah. a lot of the times these comics are coming on not because they want to talk to me or, or be on my show. It's a little crazy, a guy wearing a ski mask. But for the simple fact that my show is, is garnishing a lot of views right now compared to some of the stuff they're doing, which brings yeah. me into uh, you can't get soft with, like you say, the promotional techniques because they yeah. change so often and they'll change right out from underneath you. And a lot of these comic, a lot of these comics think that the way they promoted their show two or three years ago by posting a 15 minute clip and saying, all right, it's it's up everywhere now. Well, after a while, people are going to stop clicking on that because it just gets uh, monetary. Like, all right, this is the same thing every week. Well, yeah. Why don't you do something wild? Uh, host a, <laughs> an eating competition with yes. two, two guys and, and, yeah. and post the clips on that. And people will be like, holy shit. Yeah, you know? that's fucking cool, man. And slicing and dicing it up and, and calling it something provocative because you are. You're, you're kind of, you know, you're dishing the dirt. And I love the fact, like, these comedians, they want to come on not just because of you and not just because you guys are fans and talking about... They want to talk about this stuff. They want to fucking vent about the bullshit that's going yes, on. Yes, absolutely. That's why uh, now is really the best time to launch this thing. So I was so happy that, uh, you know, it was honestly the best time for me, too. So I was ready, yeah. and, and we put it up in the air, and everything just kept falling into place. But, uh, I mean, I, I can't... I don't have one bad thing to say about the show, except... Uh, I, I guess I'm going to have to, I'm the ski mask guy, you know, so, I mean, I am the ski mask host, Good. I mean, that's, you know, I, my real name is hidden. <laughs> dude, I fucking love that, dude. When, when comedy opens back up, they're going to be like, dude, ski mask host. I can't fucking believe it. I just saw your show. Take the mask off. It's like, nah, dude. I know. Like, that's, I mean, it scares fucking, me. A I'm infamous. Yeah. I'm infamous <laughs> as well as famous. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how it's going to go down because a lot of, uh, a lot of the stand up involves, you know, facial reaction so it's like oh man yeah. I, so i'm gonna have to go different there too which i've been i've been working a few things out and uh we'll have to see how it goes there's only one way it could go good or bad yeah, and really like you're you're honing your chops with some of the best man you're, you know you're putting these these great comedians on and you know you, you can be sharp with your words and who gives a fuck what's going on under yeah. the mask it's amazing yeah. but everybody else is gonna have masks on anyway it's just gonna be uh you know <laughs> n95 masks or whatever those face masks oh are. i'm so glad i didn't uh start the n95 show or the n95 <laughs> mask show i mean it would have just been a bomb <laughs> I'm happy I went with ski mask, you know. <laughs> uh, I love that dude. So perfectly timed, and I can't wait to see the future shows. And those are, you know, just go, just YouTubing ski mask collective will bring up. Right. Yeah, you know, you know, I think you're up to episode, you know, thirty seven, uh, thirty seven, and you got big old fucking guests, and yeah. and we look forward to it. And and you know, I follow you. You're here on ski mask host across all socials. So yes, that yes. Gets, that gets you the right place. It gets you ski mask collective on Twitter and Instagram. Right, and uh, we we just launched. Uh, the Patreon, which is for the people who love the show and they want to get to know the host. So, uh, you know, on the Patreon, I do no, there's no background. I use a different color mask and I'm, I'm relaxed. And uh, we're really just talking amongst ourselves about uh, the previous episodes or getting to know uh, who we are, you know, behind the mic. Because on the shows, the regular podcasts and the YouTube, all the focus is on our guest. I mean, we want to know yeah. what's going on with them. And uh, we'll just, we chop it up, and who knows who we're gonna have on next? I mean, it's it's getting yeah. crazy. I mean, yeah, we'll... these names these names are so big, man. I, I really can't wait to see who drops. And normally, I don't go on other people's podcasts, but let me <laughs> let me tell you, like, if I ever get big enough, <laughs> I want to come on Ski Mask Collective. That's, that's the thing, man. I'll have you on. <laughs> you can come Dude, on I'm the not, show. I'm not big enough yet, man. The fucking <laughs> names. You you set the bar so high. Oh. <laughs> that you gotta be you know this high to ride man you gotta be this fucking uh far along in your career and hilarious and so uh i look forward to the day when i'm gonna fucking join the, <laughs> the big ass names that you have on there and it's just don't fall off man that's the only problem man you're like i can't think of anything bad to say about the podcast i can you set the bar too fucking high <laughs> yeah well, i got it on that well, so i appreciate that because uh you know it's hard for me to to decipher uh, what's going on with the show? Because I got these. I guess sometimes I get these trolls who are like, "Oh, shitty guest," or "or worst guest ever." Once you get some real names, I'm like, "Real names? Uh, they got a comedy uh, special, a uh, hit podcast." 
So you're yeah. right. I, you're right. I'm just. I just need to keep scrolling when I see those comments. <laughs> I've never heard of this Gino Bisconti or, or Ray yeah. DeVito guy. Who are, who are these people? Right. Yeah. I, know, I know comedy. Right. Yeah. I know comedy, but I've never heard of any of these people. It's like yeah. that sentence can't be true. Both. Yeah, you, you don't know both comedy. sentence clauses. Yeah, it can't be mm-hmm. true. You can't know comedy and not know your guests. But Ski Mask host, thank you so much for coming on. I'll keep following you here, and I can't wait to see who's next. All right, Cup, and I appreciate it, man.